Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Black man accused of bloggery, chopping man with machete. A man has been charged with bloggery and wounding with intent in relation to an incident that occurred on the Prospect Main Road in St. Thomas on Wednesday, March 15. Charged is 22-year-old Brian Bailey, otherwise called Black Man, a laborer of Salt Lane in the parish. Reports from the Morant Bay Police are that about 2.20 a.m., Bailey gained entry to the complainant's home. The man was subsequently awakened by the noise and went to investigate when he saw Bailey inside the house. A tussle ensued between them and Bailey chopped the complainant several times with a machete. The police were summoned and the injured man was taken to hospital where he was admitted. A report was made to the police and an investigation launched. Bailey was later arrested and charged on Tuesday, March 21, after he was interviewed in the presence of his attorney. He is scheduled to appear before the St. Thomas Parish Court on Friday, March 24. Man fined $10,000 for ganja, cocaine in St. James Court. A man was caught with a small quantity of marijuana and cocaine was fined $10,000 when he appeared in the St. James Parish Court on Wednesday. Owen Wade, 24, pleaded guilty to possession of ganja and cocaine when he appeared before presiding parish judge Sasha Marie Simit Ashley. According to information presented to the court, on January 2nd, officers were on mobile patrol in the vicinity of White House when they noticed two men crossing the road. When they were told to stop, one of the men took something from his knapsack and tossed it away. The object was recovered and discovered to be three small parcels containing one gram of cocaine. A small quantity of ganja was also found. When weight was cautioned, he reported this to the officer, I just a little juggle me at the boss. Beg your chance, please. In mitigation, attorney at law, Henry McCurdy, stated that his client was hardworking, had no prior convictions, and requested leniency from the judge. McCurdy also informed the court that his client intends to go back to school to learn a trade and improve himself. The lawyer also cited some success stories of former offenders. Simit Ashley stated that she would take Wade's age and previous good character into consideration and assured him that she would give him a chance. You are the author of your destiny. Everything is in your hands now. Be a success story that the stories that your attorney share with us, the judge said. She then fined him $8,000 or 10 days in jail for the cocaine and $2,000 or 10 days in jail for having the weed. Devil Man Charged with Murder A man has been charged with murder and illegal possession of firearm following an incident on Belfair to present in Kingston on December 21, 2022. Charged is 27-year-old David McKenzie, otherwise called Devil Man, a mason of March Penn Spanish Town in St. Catherine. Mackenzie was charged with the murder of 29-year-old Marvin Lindsay, otherwise called Peacehead, of Bildir Crescent in the parish. Reports from the Hunts Bay Police are that about 6.15 p.m., Mackenzie and Lindsay were having a conversation with another man when it is alleged that Mackenzie pulled a firearm and opened gunfire at Lindsay, killing him. Mackenzie and the other man escaped in the motor car. A report was made to the police and an investigation commenced. Mackenzie was subsequently arrested and on Tuesday, March 21, he was charged. The police have since launched a manhunt for Mackenzie's co-accused. Man charged following shooting incident in civil gardens. A phone technician has been charged with warning with intent following an incident in his community of civil gardens in Kingston on Thursday, March 9. Charge is 44-year-old Corey Jaman. Reports on the Hunts Bay Police are that about 10.15 p.m., a man was walking along the roadway when he was pounced upon by Drummond, who opened gunfire hitting him. The complainant was assisted to hospital where he was treated. Drummond was arrested and subsequently charged following a question and answer session in the presence of his attorney. Path to be reviewed following concerns raised by opposition, says Clark. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark has indicated that the program of advance through health and education path is to be reviewed in light of concerns raised by his opposition counterpart. Last week, Julian Robbins appointed to issues with the selection of part beneficiaries and called for the program to be revamped. In responding to the concern on Tuesday, while closing the budget debate, Dr. Clark said the Labour Ministry, in collaboration with the Planning Institute of Jamaica, will review the program. Dr. Clark said the objective references used when part was created years ago are not relevant today. 
the opposition spokesperson, Madam Speaker, raised the issue of the targeting methodology used by the PATH program in light of his observation that persons who one would think ought to qualify are sometimes denied access to the program. And I know that other members of the House share this observation, and I consider it a valid point. Allow me, therefore, Madam Speaker, to update the House and him that the Minister of Labor and Social Security, in co collaboration with the Planning Institute of Jamaica, where the technical expertise lies, will be reviewing the targeting approach of the PATH program. It's important, Madam Speaker, to note that in the absence of reliable income data, the PATH program needs objective criteria that correlates with and can be used as predictors of policy, of poverty. So we can't ever get to a stage where it's what somebody think, you know, I think said, or I, my belief is, or, you know, I know it. No, it has to always be an objective reference. But objective references have to change over time. The objective references that we used 20 or 30 years ago, 23 years ago, when the PATH program began, are not relevant for today for a number of reasons and a variety of reasons. So working with the PIO and Jay, Madam Speaker, we're going to be able to run the regression analyses based on the data and survey of living conditions to look at the correlates to poverty in today's Jamaica and see if we can adjust and update the screening and targeting mechanism. Vloggers Haunted, a talk on freedom of speech or unfortunate coincidence. In recent times, the violent deaths of bloggers have left some members of the online community feeling like they're hunting game. Two weeks ago, popular 32-year-old vlogger Nigel Big Beach Walford was shot and killed by unknown assailants in Red Pond, St. Catherine. The Campion College alum created and moderated the popular Instagram page August Town 876, where he regularly expressed views on news and current affairs, especially on crime and policing in Jamaica. The police have no leads into Walford's death. Head of the St. Catherine North Police Division, SSP Howard Chambers, said there is no evidence that Walford was targeted because of his online crime-related blogs. We are still investigating SSP Chambers to reporters. Despite the concern within the vlogging community, members of the traditional media fraternity believe that the deaths of vloggers can be construed as an attack of freedom of speech or the free press. A lot of these bloggers are involved in extracurricular activities that might put them in harm's way. There is no evidence that the deaths of these bloggers have anything to do with their reportage on certain events or opinion, one high-ranking executive member of the Press Association of Jamaica stated. The extracurricular theory may have been some credence. In August 2022, police revealed that a homemade firearm with two magazine hosts and military clothing were seized at the house of a popular Jamaica Labour Party JLP blogger, 37-year-old Philip Taylor, after he was found dead in a car. In September 2022, Clarendon-based blogger Leon Lee Gates McNeil was condoned at a party only a few hours after reporting under double murder via Lee Gates TV and Entertainment, his social media platform used to provide live updates on crime. McNeil was at a party about 8.55 p.m. when he was approached by men who shot him multiple times. The 36-year-old declared his intention to attend the party via live streaming video earlier that day as he reported on the double homicide in the parish. Police sources say McNeil might have been in the wrong place at the wrong time, according to lawmen, an ongoing feud between men from the era is believed to be what caused the attack at the party where McNeil and another man were shot. Big Beach Walford of August Town 876 was shot and killed on March 3, 2023. Born and raised in August Town, he had been living outside the community in recent years after being dragged before the court on several crime-related issues. He was detained in April 2020 by detectives assigned to the Counterterrorism Organized Crime Investigations Branch, CTOC. After several subsequent court appearances, the case was eventually dropped in December last year. In March 2021, YouTuber Nicola Campbell of Nicola's Campbell's Journey was shot dead outside her home in St. Andrew. According to the police, the 36-year-old was returning home from the Kingston Public Hospital, where she worked as a registered clerk, when a gunman approached and opened fire, hitting her several times. She was pronounced dead at the scene, the police said. The mother of three regularly shared videos of herself and her children on her YouTube channel, Nicole Campbell's Journey. However, the sting of death involving bloggers 
may just be an unfortunate coincidence. Correlation does not prove causality, the PAJ executive note. If a reporter is killed and there is no definite threat to that reporter's life based on the work that they have done, then we cannot just draw a conclusion. Correlation doesn't prove causality. Others are convinced that bloggers are not being hunted because of the agency opinions and investigative work to highlight criminal activities. Popular YouTuber Sir P has revealed that he has been threatened many times by underground figures and Sir P also revealed that popular blogger Big Meech had reached out to him about threats only days before he was caught down in Spanish town. Big Meech and Sir P are members of the new group of intense, eager bloggers who have been lighting up YouTube by dishing interesting insider's information about the machination of gang leaders and leaking sensitive information about murders. Still, the traditional media believes that it is time to have a conversation with the wave of new journalists about their unorthodox methods. The traditional media doesn't publish the pictures of children. The vloggers need to read the Child Protection Act. There is a duty of care when it comes to dealing with children in danger. Further, bloggers need to get away from posting unverified information and that believe that if something no go so, it near go so. That's why more of them are getting sued, the media executive told reporters. One such case of the member of the new media being sued is that of gender activist Latoya Nugent of the Tambourine Army. The Supreme Court awarded $16 million to former Moravian Minister Dr. Connie Thompson in his defamation lawsuit filed against her in January 2019. New media has to understand that not because two people posted it means that it is true, the media exec stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.